and welcome back to T's Kitchen where I teach you how to cook large meals for events and gatherings. So today, word of the day is quinoa. Quinoa with vegetables. So, and I love quinoa. This is my dish right here. So look, our ingredients are going to be red bell peppers, yellow squash, green squash, red onions, and mush, uh, portobello mushrooms. I'm going to show you how I cut those up. The reason why, I'm going to show you how I cut a whole real bell, pe bell pepper up because it's, it is a little different from cutting up a green bell pepper. So I want to show you this. Now, this yellow squash, look at this. This is the fat end of it, and this is the smaller end. So I just cut the fat end in half. Like I'm not like all not all the way to the top. And I want you to see that because I'm not going to cut these pieces small. Look at this. These are going to be more than bite size because they are going to shrink down after cooking. Uh, just after even sitting some days in the quinoa, it's going to just start to meld. And then this is the green um, squash, and it's bigger than the yellow squash. So what I do is take it, cut it down half, then I place one side down and cut that in half again. So I cut it twice so the pieces won't be super big. And then just a little bit more than bite size. Like I said, all your vegetables are going to kind of disappear as the days go by and everything like that. And then, let me show you. I think I want to show you how to do this red bell pepper. Because the uh, portobello mushrooms, that's quick. I just wanted to show you a little bit about it. Um, in case you've never had to cook with it. But okay, we're going to tackle this, this baby. Isn't that pretty? I love red in the um, when I, I this recipe, the Honduras lady, the one that hit me to a joke day. So, anyways, I don't want to cut it this way, like I normally do with the uh, bell pepper. How I just cut the top off because then I'm gonna lose all of this. No, I want to do that. So I have me a smaller knife. If you can see that, I have a smaller knife, and what I'm gonna do is take it. And just cut around in a circle carefully and then dig this top out just like this see that and then you can see some of the seeds in there and what I'm gonna do is hit as many out as I can because I'm gonna get rid of as many of those seeds as possible and then we're gonna cut this I'm switching knives now. we're gonna cut it open now you see how curly and everything it is? I'm going to cut it again. I want flat pieces, as flat as possible, of the red bell pepper. I ate uh, some kind of dish, and I think it was Thai food, but it wasn't a, spi a spicy dish. And I was at a birthday party with my late husband of his oldest sons, and they ordered food for the party, and I mean... I fell in love with the way they cut those bell peppers up in, I think it was quinoa. And so, anyways, this is how I saw it in the dish. So, you see me cutting all this white stuff off? Look at all of that. I don't want that. It's not pretty. And I don't even want to know what it tastes like. So I'm going to cut that off. Little pieces of white, it doesn't matter. Look at all these seeds. Get those out, see? And you got a nice, pretty red piece. And do the same to these. We're going to get the seeds off just like that. No biggie if one or two get left behind. It's, it's okay. It's okay. So now, <laughs> and it's just me. But because those pieces were flat, they were flat real red bell peppers at, in this dish. So I cut off the top and I just go ahead and throw that in the pile. And this part is a little curvy, but that's okay. So what I'm gonna do is take this whole thing 
and I'm gonna cut it in half at this point. See? And then I'm gonna cut this into big red bag. They don't have to match or anything like that. Just like that. It's gonna melt down, meld down. So I'm gonna cut this one in half. And look at that. I get even more pieces because that was wide. And the big pieces, it doesn't matter. Just cut it up. And then look at this one. See how curly it is? It curled in. So I cut that down. I cut it off. And I just throw it in the pile. And then I take this part, since it's a little wide up at the top, and I go ahead and cut that and cut it. And as you can see, it's not uniform pieces. This is the same thing. I cut this little curly part off. Just me trying to imitate that that food I had at that party. It was so good. And uh, I heard my husband thought, thought it was Thai food. So anyways, um, that's how I did that. Now, let's go to these portobello mushrooms. This is the size of the container. It was this big. And it had, it was full of mushrooms, portobello mushrooms, like that. Now, I had, honey did, no, nope, I did two of these because I like portobello mushrooms. It brings a lot of flavor. So let me show you this. When you get your portobello mushrooms, they have a little, you see that little stem right there? Can you see it, Reg? Yeah. And you can eat that, but um, I just don't want to. So I do it like that. I just take my finger, my thumb, and roll it out. I'm sure some chefs are like, you know what? They want to cut me right now. <laughs> but that's okay. Then I take the, uh, the mushrooms, and I cut these up into a little bigger than by size also. Now, what I wanted to tell you, I was going to tell you something about, oh, I chopped these things up yesterday. So a lot of times when you're cooking a large meal or you just cooking for a gathering or whatever, you can do some of your prep ahead of time. The more you can prep ahead, the better. You don't want to prep uh, too much with things that will get soggy on you. But things that are dry, you could, this I did yesterday, all of this I did yesterday. I just cut, I have some more red onions. No, I cut up most of them. And then I just showed them to you. Now, last but not least, the star of the, oh, and I wanted to show you, I use one large red onion. And it only made this much onion. <laughs> But that's all right. We don't need more than that. So this is the star of the show, the quinoa. Now, what I'm going to do is measure it out in a cup over at the, at the pot. Because when I bought these from um, Sprouts, uh, it was by weight. But other than that, you can get these from your grocery store and it's in a box. And it'll just say quinoa. They have different kinds of quinoa. This is white quinoa. You can get uh, whatever you want to get, but that's white quinoa. So anyways, we're getting ready to head over to the stove and start preparing this quinoa first and then frying up all these vegetables. Listen, I forgot to show you uh, another ingredient. You need some cilantro. It, this is going to bring flavor to your quinoa. And this is just some flat leaf parsley that I got to just make it pretty. But I wanted to show you, you know I know to show you how to uh, pull this off the stem and everything. But I'm going to show you a quick way. Get a sharp knife and just shave it off. You see that? And any big stems that come out, just, um, I'm making a mess. Like this big old stem, just take it out. That's all. The ones that made it through. And then you take your um, cilantro, and I want some more. I like that cilantro flavor. 
in this dish. It's, if you don't have the cilantro, it's missing something. So anyways, I'm going to pull some of these off so I can get some more flavor. Uh -uh. I don't want those stems. I think that's going to be good. Mmm, I smell it too. Another herb that smells so good is rosemary. We're like a Nicholas. Okay, anyways. Mm -mm. We don't want that stem. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off. So then we take it, of course, and we chop up these into small pieces. Just keep chopping it, you know, making sure there are no big pieces in there. If it is, it's, it's not going to. But you know, a lot of people think they don't like cilantro. And the reason is the pieces are too big. It's too much and it's too big. So anyway, so I chop it up. Chop, 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 chop. And this is going into quinoa. So I, I had to come back and tell you guys that, you know, because you have to have this cilantro for this dish. This is some flat leaf parsley. I'm going to do the same thing. Just cut some off. I'm actually going to hold this tighter so those big stems don't fall out. Don't throw that away. You can, if you feel like plucking through it, pluck on. <laughs> so anyways, ooh, this flat leaf parsley smells good too. Fresh herbs are really uh, nice. So anyways, I'm going to chop this up a little bit. I see a stem in there that I really don't want. He's trying to hide from me. There he is. He's feeling kind of thick and hard. So look. I mean, that thick was a good piece too. So anyways, I just chopped it up. And I just wanted to come back and show you that real quick. So you don't have to have flat leaf parsley. Or parsley at all. But you do need the uh, cilantro. Okay. I guess I'm going to take my whole... No, I'm going to get my cutting board in a minute. I'm going to leave this right here. Then I'll come back and get it at the stage that I need it. I put my towel over here. Okay, Reg, come on. All right, so now it's time to cook this quinoa. So I'm going to turn my heat up. I have, I put my little measuring cup over here so I can remember what I put in here. I have, see in here, Reg? I have two tablespoons of olive oil, and I have one-fourth of a cup of uh, vegetable oil. And so I got, I have my heat on uh, medium low for right now. And I measured my quinoa right here, the two bags. That's two cups, so this is two cups. So I'm doing four cups of quinoa. And what I'm gonna do is pour it right here. I'm turning the heat up a little bit because I want this to fry. And I'm gonna put this one in too. Now I tell you, it pop everywhere. <laughs> yeah. and you can see that quinoa frying. You want that to happen. This gonna be a lot of quinoa. And then um, what I do now is I'm going to stir this up. Because what I'm doing is um, kind of roasting, I guess you would call it, the quinoa, getting it ready to receive the, the liquid that I'm going to add to it, which is just water. So you see that? And you can hear it frying. You hear it? Okay, maybe not. <laughs> anyway, so after I get that stirred up and it's coated with the oil, so I'll coat it, coat it. Let me make sure I got this right. And then I'm going to take some, this is important, oregano. You need oregano, you don't need that cilantro. So I'm going to take, oh Lord, I usually don't measure. And these, this is going to fall through. But look, this is four cups of quinoa. So I'm going to put, what is that, a tablespoon? No, nope, I'm going to put more. No, that is not two, two? It's gonna be two now. 
because um this right here is a part of making it taste taste what it's gonna do what it's gonna do and see the reason why i could tell i didn't have enough the first time because i didn't see these little green flakes and now i can see them so i'm going to continue to cook this quinoa some let me turn it up a little bit more not much more but right now it's on medium and um I'm going to add the chote. Here goes my chote. Remember? Chote. Now this, I don't measure. I literally just put it in like this. And then I stir it up and see if I can cover all of the quinoa in that red color. If it's not covered, you need a little bit more. So I'm going to do this. Make sure I'm really smushing it around and smashing it and trying to spread that achote out. I'm not going to put a lot more, but I think I need a little more. Okay, just like that. See? And then... I'm gonna add some salt. Here go my Davis Coaster salt. This is, uh, like I said, this is four cups of quinoa. I'm just gonna do about a heaping tablespoon. Not a heaping one. I don't mm -hmm. want to say that. Palmful. A tablespoon. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't want to over salt this. You can always add salt to your food after it's even done. It's really good when you get the salt just right and you um, don't have to add salt. So anyway, um, that's how you do that. You get that cooking, getting it, the, uh, the uh, what is this, the grain to open up and ready to receive the water that I'm going to add. And after I add the water, I'm going to add the um, cilantro. That we cut up over there and i'm gonna add those uh the flat leaf pars parsley which is optional so in this water i have it on a low just simmer because i want hot water i don't want to use cold water normally i would cook this quinoa in this same pot and just uh fill it up until i get about a half an inch to an inch above the quinoa i usually don't have this much quinoa in here but um, always rule of thumb is about a half inch to an inch above, just to be safe. But today, I'm going to uh, cook it in a rice cooker. Hmm. I don't know what you're saying. Oh, I'm going to cook it in a rice cooker. <laughs> you <that'll play. laughs> uh, I'm going to cook it. Uh, that's fine. I'm going to cook it in a rice cooker. You're good. You're and, good. Uh, You're straight. Yeah, I smell it. You smell that rice cooker? Mm. <laughs> so let me turn this off. So look, like I said, normally we I would do it in here. Just do a half an inch to an inch above the quinoa. But today, I'm going to cook it in the rice cooker. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go on that side ridge. And then I'm going to put this all in the rice cooker. Nice and cute. Reg bought this. <laughs> and he had to buy a couple of them because they kept sending them to us all bent up. I don't even know what that was <laughs> The first one came in, then it, it was like bent in half. I, I don't know what right, happened there. Was, like somebody sat on it. Oh, man. <laughs> if you all would have seen it, bro. Okay, so anyways, we're going to take this water. Or you could just get hot water at the sink. And I'm going to pour it in here. Pour it, pour it, pour it. And see, I know I need some more. That's not enough. So hold on. Let me get some hot water out of the sink. No big deal. And it's already plugged up yet. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, I don't even have to wait till it gets hot. And I don't need a whole bunch. Because the one thing you don't want is for your quinoa to be overcooked. This is not cool at all. What did I do with my little spoon thingy? 
I don't know. But anyway, so at this point, I'm taking my cilantro and my flat leaf parsley. And I'm putting it in there. You know that's going to disappear. But that cilantro is where the flavor is. So now, oh, we got to close it. And then push quinoa. This one has a quinoa setting on it. Do I hold it, Reg? Uh, I think you cancel it first and then you push quinoa. There you go. Okay. Boom. Mm -hmm. We're going to get that. It's on. Let me wash my hands off. So now we're coming over here mm -hmm. to deal with our vegetables. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, you know, I'm in my, uh, my walk. I'm in my walk again. That's just the pot. I'm in my walk because we got. I need to cook on some hot heat. You don't have to have a walk. You can have uh, just a skillet. Because before I had this walk, which I bought for Reg, um, I cooked everything in a skillet. So I wanted to show you the oil I have in here is two thirds cup of vegetable oil or whatever kind of oil you want to use. And then, um, what I'm going to cook first are the mushrooms, because these have a lot of liquid in them. That's, I, I, I don't even know if I sh told you, when I, uh, cut, before I cut up those mushrooms, I had a paper towel, and I dip, I put it dip, just a little water on it, so it's damp, and then I wiped off all of the um, portobello mushrooms. That's how you clean them. You do not run your mushrooms underwater. <laughs> That's what I did. That's like, <laughs> you did that. Mm -hmm, biggest mistake ever. Uh, yeah, you don't do that. That's like running your dang on hair under some water, I guess. Mm -hmm. So anyways, look, I want to fry these. I do not want these to boil. That's why I got this heat up super high for these portobellos. Throw that over there. And I'm gonna keep it up high. She's gonna be up high. Why is my. I have a thing over here to toss all my stuff. Where is it? The metal one. The spoon? Um. I wouldn't know. It was right here. You know, stuff be disappearing Ooh, around this house. Dirty. I do not want to have to turn. Uh, I gotta turn on that hot that uh that thing. Sorry guys, it's loud. I guess I have to use this. Well, you know, I like to use the uh, metal one when I'm in the wall. It just scoops under everything really well. The spatula or something? Yeah, it looks like a spatula. And it's metal. I know and what I you're talking about. I had to sit right up here waiting for you. I oh, don't know where that went. It should be right here. Mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> you can hear that. I have this on high. And I want to cook these first because I really want to cook a lot of that water out. Because if I start adding all these vegetables, on top of these mushrooms, everything is going to start boiling. And we're already going to have uh, some juice in it anyway. So I'm still looking for my dang old spatula. So, I can't even blame Lucky for it. <laughs> Anyways. I really don't even want to uh, season it. I cook it so many different times. It's just like I do whatever. The seasoning is going to get into it anyway. Mushrooms soak up everything. But right now, I want to get that, that liquid out of there. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead. Let me tell you this one. I'm going to go ahead and keep on cooking these vegetables. And when I get them all in there, the only reason why I don't want to put them all in right now is because, like I said, it'll start boiling. Um, these I'm going to probably do 
next, no, I'm going to do those two. I'm going to do this last because I like that red, vibrant color. So I want to do that one last. So uh, we'll be right back. Um, but I get all these vegetables in there and I'm not going to season them until you come back. Okay, so we um, I cooked the mushrooms, as you can see right here, until all of the liquid is out of the pan. Then I added my squashes in here. Now, the reason why I want you to see this, and I'm just tossing it. Oh, let me turn this down. The reason why I want you to see this is because at this point, I'm going to start to season my squash and my mushrooms. The bell peppers, I will just sprinkle a little bit on the end, you know, at the end once I get it in. But it doesn't really need much. So the reason I see is that I've given you all of everything that I have in here in another video. And because this is a lot of vegetables, look at me. I'm going to take, like I do, a palm tree. And I spread it around and see what it looks like. Now I feel in my soul that I need a half another time for Just a half, the fingertips. Okay. So my hands are washed and clean. I wash them so much they raw. So anyways, um, I'm gonna stir this up because I'm trying to get that seasoning all through this right now. And I don't have a lot of seasoning salt in this batch of my pinky. Um, I just want it to be safe, you know. I, I didn't have too much in my other batch either. And you can hear it quieting it. It's quieting down. So I got to let this cook down a, a pretty, you know, I want it to cook down until it's not soggy but it's soft and what's going to happen is and then i'm going to put add this in with these onions i would have already added the onions in but they're on the bottom of these bell peppers but normally i would have added those in with that and then with the bell peppers later so it's cooking and this is still on high because these vegetables are going to release uh juices and you're going to end up with juice left in, in your king, in your uh, sauce. So you have to be careful when you're putting that in your quinoa so it won't wet your quinoa and your quinoa cook up. So anyways, we're going to keep cooking this until it gets down. We're going to taste it. You know, because this is squash. And you can taste it right now. You can taste it before you even cook it. Squash is good. So anyways, just do this. Cook it down to uh, as soft as you would like it. I'm going to show you when it's at the point where I like it. And I consider it done. But not before I add my uh, red bell peppers. Alright. So we're going to go ahead and add these bell peppers. These are almost done. They are like right there. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and add this in. And then I tasted it, and it does need some more seasoning. So we did one palm full, so I'm going to do another one. And it's okay. It's mostly, um, I like, uh, I like, um, what do you call it? Powder, or uh, onion powder. And so I put a lot of onion powder in this batch. And we don't want too much because remember we put a little bit of salt in the um, quinoa. And this right here, I mean, look how good that looks. You can eat this just by itself. And I tell you, it is really good. A lot of times when I'm making quinoa, I'll take me some of these vegetables <laughs> to the side and uh, Divvy it up, you know, so I can have some for uh, lunch and stuff like that. You know, or even dinner. And it, this is really good for if um, you want to, it's an alternative to having meat. 
But I promise you, this combination is delicious, these vegetables. So, we're going to let this cook for just a little bit. I would say, because see right now, can you see them in this pocket? Uh -uh. Look at that. Is, see that? See that juice? We don't want all that juice. I always say that, huh? <laughs> but you don't want that because your quinoa will get all clumped together. And we want our quinoa nice and fluffy and falling apart. Just grain, just grain by grain. Oh my goodness, I can't stop eating it when it's like that. When you get it perfect, but yeah, all this boiling that's going on, that's not going to work. We got to get that out of here. So, I did add so total seasoning is I added two and a half palm fools. <laughs> so, like two and a half palms. I, I don't think they sell those measurements in the grocery store, but you saw mine. My palms. So, uh, I'm going to let this cook. Get a good look at that veg. Isn't that pretty? It's so delicious. It smells good too. It smells good. Quinoa and vegetables. And the quinoa is almost done. I see it over there with the steam coming out of the, what is that called, Ridge? Rice cooker? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a multi cooker. Real nice. So look, we'll be right back as soon as this, this is about to be done. So as soon as I get most of this liquid poured out, I'm going to come back and show you how it looks. And we're going to put it together with the quinoa. Okay, so look. We're done with this fabulous meal. Fabulous. This is that quinoa with red bell peppers, yellow squash, green squash, portobello mushrooms, red onions, and a little bit of cilantro. Um and flat leaf parsley optional so you know i've tasted it because <laughs> you have to taste your food so i'm gonna take me some i want you to see how it falls apart you see that see those uh see how they falling see that that's what you want you don't want them to stick together you want them to fall apart just like that Lord, I didn't cover it up my fork. Ah! <laughs> you was going to eat with the I'm fork. I'm so busy trying to shut him. Trying to sit up here. Oh, my God. Look at these uh, bell peppers. Remember I cut them and try to make them flat? This is what I wanted it to look like that. And look, it's not cooked until it was soggy. It's, it's cooked. I don't know if you can hear that, but I still done it, and it's uh, it's real sweet. Mmm, I love quinoa. Mmm, one more time. Mmm, 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 mmm. Anyway, since it's not a uh, mukbang show. I won't keep eating. <laughs> so let me have one more. Mm hmm. Mm. I just want you to see how those grains fall apart. But anyway, try this quinoa dish. I don't have any quinoa on my lips, do I? Nah, you good. <laughs> anyway, try this dish. Um, it's really good. It's hearty. It's good for you. I can't eat a lot of it, the quinoa, because it has the same properties as rice as far as the starch. But um, if you're fine with that, do it. I will still gonna portion me out a little bit, so I'm going to eat this a little bit a day. And I love vegetables, so I even had some vegetables left over, so uh, <clears throat> I didn't put them all in here. Normally I would, but Reg was like, don't put them all in there. So we're going to eat those as vegetables. So, of course, let me get further ado. 
my signature drink. You know, you know, you know. Oh, lemonade. That cool, refreshing drink. Wowers. Fruit punch and lemonade. <laughs> you are from old school but if you remember from back in the day we had a commercial and they were like lemonade that cool refreshing drink you young bucks don't know nothing about that anyway don't forget to like share subscribe and comment i'm getting so good at this i think but anyway, he said we appreciate you we appreciate you for joining us please try this dish you can't go wrong. It's all flavorful. It's all good. As far as the seasonings, just put together whatever seasonings you like. Put them in a little bowl and just don't put a lot of salt. And use that to season your foods. Okay? So we'll see you on the next one. Uh, I, don't, I think I'm doing ribs. St. Louis ribs. I like St. Louis ribs. But anyways, this is King Wild. Let's stop talking about ribs. All right, take care. See you on the next one. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, and push that notification bell so that you will be notified the next time I upload a video.